The Virgin Islands Shipping Registry is taking its services to the communities. What does this mean for the people of the territory? On this program, we hear from Acting Director of the Virgin Islands Shipping Registry, Captain Raman Bala, on how they intend to achieve their community outreach goals. Captain Bala, yes, tell us more about this evening's public meeting. Uh, we have a very fantastic uh, evening tonight. Uh, just another uh, Totola evening and uh, we are having one of our first public outreach program. We are taking the Virgin Island Shipping Registry to the community. We want to be there with them, talk to them and listen to them and take advice, listen to their concerns and perhaps uh, improve the way that we are doing our work. What is some of the information that you'll be sharing at tonight's public meeting on marine safety? Uh, it's a great opportunity for us to come and talk to the people who matter for us, come and talk to them personally. And what we're going to do this evening is we are going to talk about the role of the Virgin Island Shipping Registry so that people know exactly what we do. The second thing we are going to talk about is what are the new things that we are going to start and we want their advice. We want to know exactly whether they like these things that they are doing or something else. They have some other idea about it. So that's why we want to talk to them about it. And the third thing, we, we, we take safety very seriously in the Virgin Islands. Therefore, we are going to pass on some important safety messages. Also, we have four tables organized right inside. And if you see them, there is one with a lot of safety equipment and we have brought them from various sources within the island and we are going to show it to them and make sure that these are available on, on the island. People can buy them, people can, people can keep them on their boats, it will help them improve their safety. Then we have the registrar, his whole team is here to answer any question on registration. If you have a question on boatmaster's license, if you have question on survey and certification, in, anything to do with what we are doing, we have people right here who will answer your question. And we are hoping that the community will like this and, um, and uh, they will ask us to do more of them. Speaking of doing more, is this event the only one that's being held or are you planning on holding more community events? Uh, this is the first of the several that we are planning. In fact, what we are going to do is we are going to have one every two months and it is not only that we are going to just base it on Totola. What we are going to do is we are going to take it to where the people are living. We are going to Josman Dyke. We are going to Anagada. We will go to Virgin Gora. We will go to the East End. And then finally we will have one on the road town. But there will be one every two months. So the next one we are planning is in Anagada. It will be in the middle of April. On a Thursday in the middle of April, you can see us in Anagada. Captain Bala, I noticed that not only is it just a public meeting, but you mentioned before that it, there is also a display, almost like a mini exposition. Yeah. Why did you choose to, why did the shipping registry choose to combine these two activities? It's very important for the safety of any vessel that they have proper equipment on board, like we have life jackets, like we have flares, okay, like we have bilge pumps there. We have navigational equipment out there. What we want to do is, when we are talking about safety and we are talking about equipping the boat with all these safety equipment, the people should know also that it is available on the island. So that is why we are making sure these are there. And if anybody has any question on the operation or why they need it, then we'll be there to tell them exactly why this equipment is provided. And this type, this is the standard format that's going to be at all of the public meetings that you're holding? This is what we have planned, but we are open to other suggestions. In fact, if any of us, any of you have any kind of ideas that you want us to present, we'll be most happy to take it on board. And if we have to change that format to suit the, what our audience wants, we'll be extremely happy to do that. Topics covered during the session included key safety messages, rules for tendering dinghies to and from the shore, driving boats safely, operating in enclosed spaces aboard vessels,
obtaining a boatmaster's license, and use of safety equipment on boats. As part of the Maritime Safety Public Meeting, Marine Inspector Mr. Shade Saleh demonstrated the types of safety equipment that boat operators must have on board in order to pass the marine inspections for safety. Good evening everyone. As you know, I'm Officer Shadi Saleh. And here's like a multiple of safety stuff that is required depending on what you're going to fall under, either commercial or pleasure. And in the commercial field, there's different categories, either the passenger ships or if you're in the blue and yellow code, from one to four. Uh, we have flares, depending on what category you fall in, determines what count you're gonna need. Whereas you have the parachutes, you have the orange smokes, which is handheld or canister, which is buoyant, which you throw overboard. And you also have the handheld reds, all fl flares are required on all vessels regardless, but depend on the category. For instance, category four in blue and yellow code is daylight only, which you are required only to carry two reds, two orange smokes, handhelds. Category three up to one will require to carry you four parachute flares, two orange smokes, and four red handhelds, whereas the passenger vessels will carry six of the parachute flares, six of the red handheld flares, and two of the buoyant orange smoke flares. We also have the sound signals, air horns, depends on what boat you're on. You have electric horns, blow horns, loud whistles, fire extinguishers, we have the handheld version, which is for all accommodation spaces. We have the automatic version, which is best suited for the engine rooms, where you don't have to go and manually induce any fire extinguishing medium into the engine space. So with this one, this one is one of the older styles where it has the bulbs. When the engine room gets to a certain temperature, the bulb melts and it causes the fire extinguisher to ignite. And this is also a solenoid switch now, which allows the captain at the dashboard panel up at the helm station to realize, okay, I have a problem in my engine room because there's an alarm that is hooked up to this. In his presentation, Captain Bala explained that the Virgin Islands Shipping Registry is responsible for ensuring that all vessels in the territory follow the international and local laws that the government of the Virgin Islands has signed on to, such as the International Convention for the Safety of Life at Sea, also known as SOLAS, and the Marine Pollution Act, or MARPOL. He also explained that the Virgin Islands Shipping Registry is a member of the Red Ensign Group of the British Shipping Registries. This group is made up of the United Kingdom, the Crown Dependencies, and the United Kingdom Overseas Territories. These include Anguilla, Bermuda, British Virgin Islands, Cayman Islands, Falkland Islands, Gibraltar, Montserrat, St. Helena, and the Turks and Caicos Islands that all operate shipping registers from their jurisdictions. Any vessel registered within the group is a British ship and is entitled to fly the Red Ensign flag. The UK signs on to various international maritime laws and conventions on behalf of the Red Ensign group. To remain in the group and to certify vessels to operate internationally, the Virgin Islands Shipping Registry has to ensure that the BVI registered vessels are synonymous with quality shipping by maintaining high technical, social and administrative standards as reflected in the Red Ensign Group quality objectives.